word rut. Word for the day comes from Colossians chapter 3. It says, yeah, whatever you do, whatever you find fit works to do, I'm kind of paraphrasing, whatever you work on, work on as unto the Lord. Work on it with a, a wholehearted approach. Recognize you're not working for man, not trying to impress folks, not trying to just get a promotion, but when you're working, you're working as unto the Lord. Like whatever work you found to do, you work as unto the Lord. Now, how does that help us in a rut? Man, well, sometimes we all lack motivation. Like it's hard to, to get ourselves out of bed. It's hard to pick our head up off the desk. You got writer's block, worker's block, your back hurts, whatever. Oftentimes we're just bored. And boredom is like the biggest breeding ground to get stuck in a rut. Like how many, how many really regretful stories start with, well, I was just bored. Like for lack of excitement, we try to fill in the gaps and do all kinds of strange things. So what do you do when you're stuck in a rut? How do you get out of the rut? Especially during these days of, of pandemic quarantines and shutdowns, your routines, like your healthy routines are out of whack. What do you do? How do you get out of the rut? You're tired of watching the same old shows. You're re-watching you know, old shows, Monk and Friends and whatever, watching those shows again and again and again. I've seen this episode already. I have it memorized, but I'm just like, I'm stuck in a rut. Think about the Grand Canyon. Isn't the Grand Canyon just a big old rut? Like it started off as maybe a small crack, a little, a little canyon, a little creek. But over time, the power of wind and water and erosion, it can take something small and turn it into something huge. So watch out for the little cracks and ruts in your life. Like what are the ruts that if left unchecked, it become a canyon, like a, a, something that was split apart your whole world, your whole, you know, life could fall apart because of a little rut that maybe even seemed harmless at the time, innocent at the time, it's not hurting anybody, but those habits that form from repetition again and again and again of being stuck in a rut. Well, what is the difference between a rut and a grave? Really think about it. What's the difference between a rut and a grave? Isn't it just a matter of depth? One's just deeper than the other. So I just happened to roll up on the Lotus Cemetery. You look at the graves behind me. And I'm thinking like, if, if, if these graves could speak, if these, these lives of, of people could tell you their regrets, their ruts, what would they say to you? What would they say to me? If we could hear the regrets from the grave, what might they sound like? I regret I didn't spend more time with family. I regret that I didn't spend more time in God's word. I regret that I didn't spend more time in prayer. I regret that I didn't love God and love my neighbor, serve with humility, make disciples. I regret that I didn't give my life to something with more eternal significance. I'm fairly certain that no voices from the grave would come back and say, I wish I would have spent more time on Facebook and Snapchat and crushing those little candies or whatever. I wish I would have spent more time arguing online my political opinions and preconceived notions and my personal paradigms. I wish I would have spent more time in my recliner. I wish I would have spent more time 
how you fill in the gap. What are those things that we waste our lives with when there's something so much better? What are the ruts that we get stuck in? So today, coming back to the verse from Colossians chapter 3, work with everything you do, work with your hands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord, add that phrase to everything you do today. If you can put it in your brain, how am I going to eat? How am I going to work? How do I drive? How do I play? As unto the Lord. When you start scrolling, your thumb starts scrolling through, you know, all the potential clickbait minefields of being online. How do I be online as unto the Lord? How do I love my spouse as unto the Lord? How do I minister and raise my children as unto the Lord? How do I nurture my grandchildren as unto the Lord? If you can add that phrase to everything you do today, when you're on the other side of this fence, when you're in the grave, I hope that we would all have fewer regrets because we lived our lives as unto the Lord. Our ruts did not become our early grave. Because many of us, I believe, I'm not dead yet. I mean, you're not dead yet, but man, you're really like a vertical corpse in so many ways. I am like a vertical corpse in so many ways. There's so many areas of my life that are dead, like from the old sinful self that tries to creep up and take over me again to just the little things, the little ruts that go, there's no life in that, but I like it and it's comfortable and it, it brings me pleasure, it makes me happy. Those little ruts that can turn into big old box canyon graves. We need to get out of those. Because Jesus says, I come to bring you life. I come to set you free. And if the Son of God sets us free, then we are free indeed. So let's get out of the ruts today. Ask yourself from Colossians chapter 3, how can I do what I do as unto the Lord? And God bless you as you do. All right, peace. Let's ride on.